I was gonna do something kind of fun and witty for the intro, but instead I want you to meet my cat, okay? This is Finley. He's very sweet. He likes mice and he loves attacking the lizard behind me. Okay, you can go. You said hi. There's a tail there though. He's, he's usually in most of these videos. He's just hiding on the floor, uh, just out of view. So just know he's here with us in, in spirit. So Google Stadia is like that uncle that comes around to Thanksgiving once every three years. He's terrible at everything, but is convinced that he's really good at it, despite the fact that you're able to point out all of his shortcomings in quick succession. You suck! You are no talent! I don't know about you, I have not met a single person who is actively using Google Stadia, like, at all. That's all. That's all I have to say. Like, I haven't met a single person that uses it. My personal expectation would be that they're actually going to be discontinuing the service fairly soon, especially after the news that dropped today, or rather when you're saying this probably yesterday. You see, Google Stadia, for some reason, had on their servers an early playable demo work in progress draft thing, I guess, of Ubisoft's upcoming game, Gods and Monsters. You know, the Zelda lookalike uh, made by the Assassin's Creed Odyssey team. Somehow they had a demo or playable work in progress version of the game on their servers and it, uh, it, it, it leaked. It leaked so everybody was able to play it which is kind of amazing. Now I'm not going to be showing the full unedited clip of gameplay that leaked onto Google Stadia simply because these types of things tend to get copyright struck very forcefully when they leak. So to avoid that, I'm just not going to mess with it, but I will be showing some screenshots here and there. Now, the first thing that stands out to everybody who's seen this is just how similar it looks to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Everything from the font, to the compass, to the logos, to the menu items, to pretty much everything, looks as though it's directly imported from Assassin's Creed Odyssey, at least the tool set that they had. Now rest assured, this is actually very normal in game development, especially when a team just finished work on a massive project and they're pursuing work on a smaller project that's similar. It only makes sense to share resources across them as placeholders until you can replace them with something else. So for instance, the menus, before they've had the chance to hire a graphic designer to go in and design custom buttons and everything, why not just use the buttons you used in your previous game after all it's only going to be seen internally or at least that's what you would hope as long as you don't give it to google apparently the other key takeaway is just how similar this appears to be to breath of the wild literally everything even down to the stamina wheel that we saw in breath of the wild appears to be present here which I'm actually okay with, I've been saying for a while, I thought it would be interesting if we got an Assassin's Creed game that had a stamina meter for free running. It would prevent the weird sort of superhero abilities that you tend to feel whenever you play an Assassin's Creed game nowadays. But we've never gotten that in Assassin's Creed, at least not as of, uh, not as of right now. But here it looks as though we're going to get it in this hybrid between Assassin's Creed and Breath of the Wild. Now, of course I feel it pretty unfair to criticize a game for an alpha build that was never supposed to be seen by the public. So I don't think it's fair to criticize much of what we've seen because after all, this is likely an early, early alpha that's simply used to test how all of these different pieces are working together. The movement, engaging in dialogue, the free climbing, all of that. That being said, it's actually pretty in line with everything we expected from Gods and Monsters. We have the Zelda feel, we have the Assassin's Creed Odyssey feel, and they seem to be pretty evenly melded between each other. It doesn't seem as though there's a lot of really unique flavor or flair in it right now, as of what we've seen in this leaked gameplay and early build, but again, it's so early and it's 
such a basic build that I don't think you'd be able to see any of that even if it were there. But don't worry, I'm gonna go through all of my thoughts and I wanna go through more specifically what I hope to see in Gods and Monsters when it launches potentially later this year or early next year. But first I wanna thank our sponsor for this video and that is The Ridge. The Ridge makes high quality minimalistic wallets that are RFID protected, have a lifetime warranty and have free global shipping and returns. They have them in a ton of different colors such as burnt titanium, regular titanium such as this one which is my backup or carbon fiber which is my daily driver as you guys know I don't recommend a product unless I use it every single day of my life and Ridge is just one such product I carry this around with me everywhere I go I use their bags to carry all of my electronics whenever I travel or go anywhere really their stuff has some of the best build quality I've ever seen and their lifetime warranties just make it all the sweeter so whether you're looking for a new wallet for yourself or a fantastic present for friends for instance, your father. Father's Day is coming up on the 21st. This could make a pretty sweet gig, I'm just saying. No matter what the occasion is, Ridge is fantastic. Their products are amazing and I stand behind them 150%. Check them out right now at ridge.com forward slash Luke and make sure to use promo code Luke at checkout to save 10% off of your entire order no matter what it is. Again, ridge.com forward slash Luke, promo code Luke at checkout. So from the moment that Gods and Monsters was announced, it's been kind of strange because we haven't seen much of anything. They showed a quick sort of camera pan trailer where everybody immediately thought this looks like Zelda Breath of the Wild. And then they move up. It says from the team that brought you Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And we see that it's a Greek setting with monsters and it's called Gods and Monsters. We can only assume that you're running around helping out gods and monsters or fighting them in some capacity. It seemed interesting enough, but we've seen literally nothing since then. We've had a couple of interviews here and there with some creators creative directors and some press people, but really nothing that I would say is indicative of what the game is going to offer. I have listened to and read those interviews. It's not much to go on. Now at the outset, a Breath of the Wild set in a Greek mythical setting sounds fun enough, but I think there's more to it, or at least there should be. You see, in Breath of the Wild, the narrative is there and there are characters that are unique and offer some fun personalities that you can interact with, but really nobody's pretending as though that is a dialogue heavy RPG. That's just not what it is. But Assassin's Creed Odyssey really tried to do that. They had all sorts of skill checks. They wanted to make sure that you were choosing the right options. It had branching dialogue choices and the story was much more robust than what something like Zelda Breath of the Wild was attempting to offer. But the one thing that Breath of the Wild did have that really no other game before or since, in my opinion, has had was one of the most robust and amazingly intricately designed worlds I've ever seen in a video game. Seriously, no matter where you were in the map, there was always something to catch your eye, provide some sort of point of interest so that you would keep exploring. You can actually go look at the GDC Game Developer Conference speeches that the designers from Breath of the Wild gave. Those speeches are super interesting because they break down how they used basic shapes and trigonometry to refer players into points of interest and funnel them through different gameplay areas to make sure that they were always interested in something really fascinating and I think a lot more development studios should be using those principles when designing their worlds but regardless that's what Breath of the Wild did better than anybody else. So emulating Breath of the Wild is a lot easier said than done. It may seem as though you just have to add sort of a cartoony art style, a big open world where you can climb anything and there's a rigorous crafting system and then you're good to go. And while that seems initially comprehensive, it's it's far more complicated than that. They originally built Breath of the Wild in a 2D setting because they wanted to make sure that every single thing you could do in the game built upon itself. They wanted to give the player a basic set of tools that they could use to interact with the world in an unlimited number of ways. Something as simple as chopping down a tree needs to have a bunch of other uses beyond just collecting wood, which is why early on in the Great Plateau, at the beginning of Breath of the Wild, there are trees next to a large cavern and chasm, and you can cut down those trees and cross them to get across the chasm way earlier than you would have if you were just playing the normal way. They reward those creative solutions to these problems using the basic tools they offer you. And while that may seem relatively simple as far as game design is concerned, it's actually far more complicated. You see, once you 
you start factoring in and trying to anticipate player behavior in a world in which you can do basically anything and solve all of these problems in incredibly unique and creative ways, you are kind of screwed because you have to anticipate everything or have your game built in a way where it can handle anything. Breath of the Wild had some simple ways of checking to make sure that the player wasn't able to get into areas before they were supposed to, such as having stamina locks or heights that were too far for somebody to travel down or climb down, so if they tried to get off the Great Plateau early, they would simply fall to their death. But one of the keys to that game was the second they opened the gates and opened the Great Plateau to you, the whole world was yours to explore and they weren't going to stop you. Yes, there's a couple things you have to do to get into some of the more uh, arduous areas, such as getting the heat suit to explore the Great Volcano. But other than that, that's kind of it. The point is, if Gods and Monsters wants to emulate that level of freedom and exploration in their game, I would be very okay with that. More games that do that, I, I think the more the merrier, bring them on, I'd love to have them and get my hands on them. But that being said, it's far more difficult a pursuit than just copy and pasting some simple design elements from one game to another. Beyond that, a lot of people have expressed frustration or even criticism against Ubisoft for trying to meld these two together. They say that this is just a straight Zelda Breath of the Wild ripoff and that nobody should play it as a result. And while I understand that sentiment because clearly the games are very, very similar, especially in terms of art style, and even the developers have said as much as that they are melding Assassin's Creed Odyssey with Breath of the Wild, I, I don't think it's fair to criticize the game writ large simply because they're taking so much inspiration from one genre or rather one individual title. Back when Assassin's Creed Origins launched, Ashraf Ismail, the guy that's actually directing the current Assassin's Creed Valhalla launch, he said at the time that they were taking massive inspiration for that ancient Egyptian set game from The Witcher 3. They wanted to make sure that every side quest, every single quest, period, had a story at its core so that the player was motivated not just by the reward they were going to get by completing the quest, but rather also by the personal relationship that they had built with the character, even just in that short conversation before starting the quest. Are we really going to argue that they shouldn't be able to make a game or we should boycott Assassin's Creed Origins because they took a key design element from The Witcher 3 and implemented it into their game? I, I just... I think it's a slippery slope once we start playing that game, and I don't want to see where that goes, because pretty soon you're going to start saying that developers can't do much of anything because it's been done before. But all of this is kind of beside the point, because as of right now, even with the leaked gameplay footage, we don't really know much of anything. So many of the assets were placeholders that it's really hard to tell what's original to the game and what isn't. And furthermore, it's so early in the development process that you can't tell what the core gameplay loop is going to be like. It looks like there's going to be basic interactions between NPCs and the player character, and then you're gonna go and basically serve as a mercenary hunting down monsters, and then presumably there's a broader storyline where you're maybe hunting down gods or maybe working for the gods. It's hard to tell right now because there just isn't any information. My only hope is that since this happened, Ubisoft is going to be pushed into releasing some more information just so that we know more of what the game is going to offer. We know more of who it's targeting and what it looks like right now, just because if they let this sit out there for too long, people are going to start associating that leaked gameplay footage with what the game inevitably will look like, which of course it's not going to because the game is far more uh, polished up than what a very early pre-alpha most likely build of the game is. But perhaps the broader implication of this story and discussion is that Google Stadia sucks and nobody should use it. See? We all agreed on something. But that's all from me. I really want to hear your thoughts on Google Stadia, this stupid leak, and Gods and Monsters down in the comment section below. You can look up the gameplay footage for yourself, of course. Just look up Gods and Monsters gameplay and you'll find it in 10 seconds. I just didn't want to show it in its grand detail here for the reasons I mentioned. Again, big thanks to Rich for sponsoring this video. Head over to rich.com forward slash Luke. Check them out. It can't hurt. They got some crazy stuff. But that's all from me. Thank you for watching. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.